In 2013, Apple proudly announced two phones, one of which being the iPhone 5C, which uh, didn't turn out so well, but the other being one of the strongest and most revolutionary entries to the iPhone line, even to this day. The iPhone 5S brought the first 64-bit chipset and a smartphone, Touch ID, the new, very much needed design of iOS 7, and perhaps the most essential feature of all, a brand new gold color. Hey, how's it going? I'm Josh from 91 Tech, and today we're taking a look at the iPhone 5S. How does it hold up eight years later. It's 2021, and the iPhone 5S is not the same phone it used to be. Things have changed, and it's stuck a couple versions of iOS behind on iOS 12. And that being said, iOS 12 really isn't lacking in most of the features we have today, beyond like a dark mode, and the majority of apps, at least right now, will still let you download the latest version. And even as the support fades throughout this year and the next, you'll still be able to download the latest compatible versions of apps. In 2013, though, this phone was a big deal, even if it didn't seem like it to everyone in the moment. In fact, it might have felt like the opposite of a huge deal, as people had been wanting a bigger iPhone, something they'd get only a year later with the iPhone 6 and 6 Plus. The iPhone 5S namely retained the design of the iPhone 5, but something that did make waves was iOS 7, as it finally changed the skeuomorphic design of iOS to a modern, flat, bright look. It's something, looking back, many of us nostalgically might not like so much, as iOS 6 certainly had a real charm to it. But in 2013, people were ready for anything new, and iOS 7 would be installed on 35% of all iOS devices only one day after release, which is absolutely absurd. Looking in hindsight, I'd say this phone really represents a significant cutoff point in iPhone history, where devices have finally progressed to the point that we've moved on from the classic slowdown updates of the past. The iPhone 4 chugged on iOS 7, the iPhone 4S was pure pain on iOS 9, and while the iPhone 5 wasn't so bad on iOS 10, the 5S managing to get iOS 12 and somehow still feeling pretty usable was a huge step forward forward for Apple. The six major updates this phone received still remains the most of any smartphone ever, tied with the iPhone 6S and SC, albeit a little more impressive on the 5S due to the phone being older. The 64-bit chipset meant it was perfectly set up to last a long time, and mix that with the consumer-friendly update mindset from Apple, and a proper balance between speeds and continued support was finally achieved. This phone is shockingly usable today, or at least it would be if not for the battery life. The fact of the matter is, on a phone this old, with such a small battery, even with fairly little use over the years, you're gonna find that the life is pretty darn short nowadays. Even with the battery replacement, it's still not gonna be great, although for the basics like texting and calling and not much else, it's probably good enough to last you the day. In fact, my grandpa, even to this day, still has an iPhone 5S and uses it purely for the basics. And it works for him. It takes photos, he can check the weather, check his email, make calls. It's all he needs, and even if it is behind in iOS software, kind of slow and pretty bad battery-wise, he doesn't really care and it more than serves its purpose for them. And that is the kind of person these older smartphones work for. Although nowadays I'd say there's no real reason to buy one, especially with the iPhone 7, 6S, and first SE, all being so cheap on eBay if you truly need a budget phone, and they're all much better as they're supported on iOS 14. I'd also say if you're still using an iPhone 5S today, an upgrade probably is warranted, although if you're still happy with your phone, you might as well just write it out for as long as you feel like it. Just keep in mind, if you do get a newer iPhone, you're looking at a much better battery, and to some, more importantly, a significantly better camera. But let's take a step back here and talk about the aspect everyone's most interested in when it comes to any new iPhone, the design. The iPhone 5S would retain the same general shape and design of the iPhone 5 with a squared aluminum body and curved corners, along with glass antenna bands on the top and bottom of the phone. This is rightfully considered one of the best iPhone designs of all time, and Apple would even bring it back with the first iPhone SE in 2016. And the flat edges were also brought back with the iPhone 12 in late 2020, something I was really happy happy to see. Of course, my reason for loving it is because the phone can stand up on its own, making it easier to film B-roll, but surely everyone likes it for that exact same reason, right? There's no denying how good this phone looks, though. It screams class and gives a premium feel, something that really stood out in 2013, as most Android competitors still used plastic, including Samsung. Flipping the phone over to the front, we see the 4-inch Retina display that has a pixel density of 326 pixels per inch, the same count seen even as recent as the iPhone 11 or the 2020 iPhone SE. 
so as you would expect, it holds up well and content looks clean and crisp. It's not a large screen though, even if the iPhone 5 the year before did increase things to 4 inches from the 3.5 of the iPhone 4 and 4S. Comparing it to my iPhone 12, it feels quite small, definitely smaller than most people would want today, although it's pretty similar to the iPhone 12 mini. And there are benefits to it as well, using it with one hand is very easy and comfortable, and that's a big appeal to a certain subset of users. Under the screen we have the home button with the typical bezels, and that home button features the first Apple Touch ID sensor. It's a bit slow compared to newer Touch ID iterations, but it works and was a huge improvement for security compared to either having nothing or needing to put in your passcode with past iPhones. On the bottom here we have the lightning port, so that's held up well given that we still use it today, and of course the classic headphone jack. This phone is capable of 4G LTE, which was new to the iPhone 5 the year before, so it holds up well in that sense. The small camera sensor on the back is 8 megapixels and can film video in up to 1080p. Pictures can look nice in good lighting conditions outside, with mediocre HDR sure, but with some patience you can take a good shot. Move indoors or to any low light situation and you'll be looking at grainy, blurry photos, as with any older smartphone camera, but given the age of the phone, I think it does deserve a lot of leeway. I wouldn't want to use this phone as my main camera today for obvious reasons, but it's still fully capable of capturing moments and memories if need be. The selfie camera doesn't hold up as well with only 1.2 megapixels, and pictures from it are just straight up bad. Front-facing cameras have come a long, long way, that's for sure. All in all, the camera's fine. It's a 2013 smartphone with a 2013 smartphone camera, and it performs exactly how you would expect. It's not bad, and it can take some really nice photos in some cases, but you're not getting anywhere near the quality you would with a recent iPhone. Where things do really hold up well is in the tech specs, at least with the age taken into account. We've got the A7 chipset and a single gigabyte of RAM, which might not sound so impressive on the surface, but the capabilities this phone has thanks to the 64-bit architecture gave it iOS support all the way until 2019 with iOS 12. And because iOS 12 isn't too old yet, you're still able to download the current versions of a lot of popular apps like Snapchat, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, and Disney+. Plus. Surprisingly to me, Netflix actually requires iOS 13 or later, but for apps like that, as long as you've installed it before on an Apple device, you'll still be able to get the latest compatible version, or in other words, the latest version they had before making iOS 13 a requirement. So it still will work, but unfortunately this is going to be the case more and more as time goes on. If you're using an iPhone 5S right now, you're probably going to find that while it can feel slow and leggy at times, especially if you're using a more intensive app, things should still be pretty darn usable for the majority of tasks. And my experience with it was generally not very frustrating. It felt okay, the UI was decently fast. As I said in the beginning, where that frustration could creep in is due to the terrible battery life most of these old phones will be subject to. And that's just kind of a fact of life, unfortunately. If that's the situation you're in, honestly at this point, I really just recommend upgrading to a newer iPhone. I'll link my iPhone buying guide in the description below. It goes over pretty much all of your options. If you're someone who doesn't have a 5S and you want a bare bones budget iPhone or a backup phone or a phone for a kid or something to that extent, I just can't recommend buying the iPhone 5S. Yes, it is under $50 on eBay, but the first iPhone SE is barely anymore and it runs iOS 14, which will be a significantly better experience. It's an eight year old phone. Don't buy the 5S anymore, but if you already have one and still happy with it, like my grandpa, then great. Honestly, good for you. You might as well run the thing into the ground, even though I do think you would really appreciate a newer iPhone. Overall, how does the iPhone 5S hold up eight years later? Shockingly well, it's only a couple years out of date in iOS support and still manages to run most apps. It's typically not too slow, at least around the UI. The camera is mediocre, but livable with good lighting. You still have Touch ID. And the design is without a doubt one of the best Apple has ever produced, even if it's small. The iPhone 5S is one of my favorite iPhones of all time, and it has to be one of, if not the best Apple's ever made, purely for the technological advancements it brought in conjunction with the reliability and software updates over time. It's a lot of fun to look again at the iPhone 5S all these years later, so if any of you had one, make sure you let me know in the comments down below, and uh, how long did you have it for? Are any of you still actually using it? If you found this video interesting, maybe hit that like button and consider subscribing for more content just like this. You can follow me over on Twitter and Instagram at 91 underscore tech if you'd like to for some reason. And with that all being said, thank you so much for watching. I'm Josh from 91 Tech, and I will see you all next time.